before you enter the video, please do not send any hate to anyone that I talk about in this video. It's all public information mixed in with my opinions and my personal perspective and journey as someone with an eating disorder. Okay. In 2005, YouTube launched, and that was amazing. You know why? Because YouTube allows everyone to have a platform. You, me, the guy next door, we're all allowed and entitled to our own platform where we can get on our soapboxes and say whatever the hell we want. And if you agree, great. And if you don't, too bad, go find another creator. <laughs> or hate watch me. Please don't hate watch me. Please don't hate watch me. And you know, for the most part, that's great. It's home to many creators I love, like Grey Still Plays and Spleen and Bailey Sarian. Shana shan, shana shan, shana shan, shan shana. <laughs> and then there's those ones that you don't, like J Station and Anissian and Chris Hansen, who blocked me on Twitter and I have no idea why. <laughs> who knew I was that important? And they're pretty much trash human beings, and we all go, yeah, pfft, no. But you know what? They're still entitled to their own platform. Why? Because freedom of speech or something. And then there's another group the trolls, Bruh. the problematic faves, Trisha Paytas, Nikocado Avocado, Tana Mojo, Nikita Dragon. Is she, is she still relevant? I, I don't know. Jake Paul. And those are people that everyone goes, hmm, yeah. But they exist and we accept it and it's great. They're still entitled to have their that have that <laughs> they're still entitled to have that platform and to make that content as long as it's legal and as long as it's within community guidelines, terms of service, they are entitled to do that. And if you don't like it, then just don't watch it. And that's fine. But you know what we don't accept and what isn't great and what does need to change on this platform? <laughs> Misinformation. If you are going to come onto the YouTube platform as your own person and say your own opinions, that's absolutely great and fine by me. If, however, you are going to come onto this platform and say that you are an expert in a certain medical field or something or other, and then you start spreading misinformation that could potentially cost someone their lives, I think that's a problem. Imagine. A nurse who works in the ER of their local hospital. Fantastic job, by the way. I have a lot of respect. My mum was a nurse. That's awesome. Be proud of it. Genuinely. And thanks for 2020 to all you medical workers. But imagine a nurse doesn't feel that that is enough. So they come onto this platform. They set up a channel and they say, I am the head of neuro surgery at this really posh private hospital in Connecticut for some reason. And then they start saying, huh, oh, you know, if someone you know is short of breath and they're, they're clutching their chest and their left arm feels tingly, it's not a heart attack, just, just help them lie down, it'll all be good. It's not all gonna be good. <laughs> that is a serious problem. Imagine if someone did that. Have you imagined it? Have you? Good. Okay, you've imagined it. That's a problem. So, in my perspective, if you are going to come onto this platform and say that you are an expert in, you know, trauma related disorders or psychiatric disorders of some kind, you better make sure you really are an expert. And if you are spreading misinformation that is potentially dangerous, damaging, and or stigmatizing, you should be yeeted off the platform. <laughs> I think it's that simple. Who am I talking about? Katie Morton, I'm looking at you. <laughs>
she's beautiful she's our featured unicorn today Hi. i do want to say a quick thank you to everyone for the response for my without a crystal ball video and i know quite a few new people have come as a result of that video so i hope i don't let you down and i just want to say a big thank you it means a lot to me that you subscribed and that you've come back so today we are talking about a really kind of serious subject and I'm not really sure how to approach it. I've already filmed it once and failed, filmed again, maybe didn't fail, but felt like no, that time's the charm, so I'm back here filming it for the third time. Yay! Before we get into the video, I do want to say, can you please hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video, comment down below as much as you want, you can wait till the end and leave a comment, or you can comment like a live stream, it's all great, I love that, <laughs> it really helps me out a lot, and please don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this content, I think it's a nice place here. Okay, anyway. I feel like in this world that we live in, it, we like stories that have a very clear cut good and bad. This person good, this person bad, hero, villain, right, wrong, smart, dumb. We like that as a species. It's good for us. We like it. It makes us feel comforted. And as children, we're taught that if you're good and honest and true and you have integrity and you do everything that you're supposed to and you overcome your obstacles, one day you will either be the prince that meets their perfect prince or princess or the hero that meets their lover and you can end up together and live happily ever after. But sometimes there are situations that aren't quite that clear. For example, the without a crystal ball situation that I spoke about. <laughs> it's pretty clear, like I don't really see how you can argue the opposite, but okay. Whereas this situation that we're talking about today is not clear cut. It's not easy, it is a hot mess and a half. So I'm gonna say now, trigger warning, we're gonna be talking about eating disorders. I'm going to try and not show very many like photos or videos or anything. I don't think it's particularly necessary for this video and I don't really want to have that content on this channel. So I may show a couple of pictures just in case you're not familiar with the situation. And also, <laughs> I have anorexia. Um, I was diagnosed a while ago. They wanted me to go inpatient and I actually said I'd rather die than put on weight, which is terrifying when you hear yourself saying that. Um, yeah, I have anorexia, it's a thing. And I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm doing my best. And that's what I can do. But that's why today I wanted to talk about this situation because I feel like there's a bit of a bias and it's not, it makes sense, it makes sense, I get it. You see, the situation as it stands is that Eugenia Cooney is a Twitch streamer and YouTuber with about 2.24 million subscribers. Most of those subscribers are probably either subscribers looking to hate watch her or the pro Anna community or people that genuinely care about her health and safety, and then there's probably a nice group of people that genuinely enjoy her content. She's very nice, she live streams a lot, she plays games, she does cosplays, which we love here, as I'm a big fan of anime and kawaii fashion. That is brand new information! And she does makeup stuff. Unfortunately, all of that stuff is kind of shrouded in pro Anna body check videos where she will show her entire body and she will show off how thin she is um as a grown adult despite the way i dress even when i watch her content i find it triggering so when i first learned of eugenia cooney about a year or so ago i decided that i was going to pretend that i didn't know who she was so that i never felt the urge to go to her channel and to trigger myself because i'm already struggling enough as it is so that, that's what I did. Unfortunately, a lot of her demographic are young people who are very susceptible to eating disorders, people who might feel very out of control in their lives, looking for a way to control their lives, and that's generally how eating disorders start. And there has been a big hot debate on whether Eugenia knows what she's doing, whether she's doing it on purpose, or 
whether she's not. And the other day, a friend of mine basically went to Twitter and tweeted about how Eugenia Cooney is a terrible trash human being because she knows exactly what she's doing. It's pro anna content and it's harmful. This friend of mine that I'm talking about, I understand, has a history with eating disorders. So obviously it's a sensitive subject and I think it demonstrates very much how even those of us with eating disorders or history of eating disorders have kind of different opinions and perspectives on this. I spend hours and hours watching content after content, commentary channels, Eugenia's content, documentaries, psych psychiatric based videos. <laughs> it was a lot and it was quite difficult to get through, but here I am, I made it, yay. So I want to provide more insight into Eugenia's mind. Cause you know, I'm a mind reader, I've got sixth sense. So, <clears throat> personally, I believe that one of the reasons this is such a, a highly controversial topic is because of the way it has been kind of introduced to the community. Um, so that's kind of what I want to focus on. Eugenia is an adult. Most people are surprised when they find out she's not a teenager. She's 26 years old. She still lives at home despite being a very, very successful YouTuber and Twitch streamer. And she is, she's kind of become synonymous with pro Anna content. And... <sighs> It's, it's horrible, basically, it's horrible. And my personal feelings on the subject are complex. Please don't expect to necessarily agree with everything that I say, but also please understand that I'm not trying to, um, I'm not trying to enable her behavior, but I'm equally not here to villainize her because I feel that the main problem with this entire situation is that she's been villainized and I believe she's the wrong person in this situation who should be villainized. What do I mean by that? When Eugenia first started on YouTube, I think she kind of grew fairly well, but she kind of became well known when people realized how thin she was and over the time she got thinner and thinner and thinner. And many people were sending comments like, eat a cheeseburger, eat a sandwich, whatever and I'm just gonna say right now that doesn't help people seem to be under this idea that anorexia or eating disorders in general are just diets that have gone a bit far and that the person just needs to eat some food and as someone with an eating disorder I can tell you it's not it generally comes out of a place where someone feels the need to find control they feel out of control in their life so they want to find something that they can control and for some of us the only thing we can think of is what we choose to put into our bodies um and unfortunately the longer you starve yourself for the more it affects your body and your mind so for example Going back a couple years, I was a lot bigger than I am now. I looked very, very different. I said I need to go to a psychiatric hospital because I was feeling incredibly depressed and I, it had been a while. And so I went to a hospital and I stayed there for a month and they have a dining room and they come around and they ask what you want for breakfast, lunch and dinner. And on my first day, I went to sit down in there and there were all these members of staff just staring at me. And then one of them came and sat down next to me and I was like, nope, nope, can't do it. And at this point I didn't have, I mean, I'd had some problems with eating disorders. Um, after my mum passed away, I had set some problems, but not too bad. And then a couple of years after that, I was a gymnast, so I was quite muscly. <laughs> I guess the, the term is thick. I was thick. And a nurse told me that I was fat and that sent off a switch in my head and I lost quite a lot of weight but I wasn't as thin as I am now and somehow I managed to kind of deal and kind of get better but in this hospital I just I couldn't sit there and eat and have all these people watching me after a few days they knew that I wasn't eating so they decided to put me onto this drink called Ensure but they didn't try and actually like deal with the problem and so now here I am they asked me to go inpatient to feed me and I said no because I'm an adult so I can say that and that was that. The way they deal with eating disorders in the UK and from what I understand the US as well is terrible. Generally they take you, they feed you, they get you to a weight that's okay and then you leave and then you repeat the cycle over and over again because the problem is here not here 
And so that's what we're seeing with Eugenia. She took a break and went to get help where they basically fed her and then they released her. And then Shane Dawson did a documentary that painted it like sunshine and rainbows. Like, oh, look how easy it is to recover from an eating disorder. You just go away. It doesn't matter if you've had years of acting in a way that someone with an eating disorder would if you've spent years with this voice inside your head telling you how fat and disgusting and ugly you are. No, 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 no. You just need to go and stay in a place where they take your phone away and feed your fries for a few months and then you'll leave and then everything will be great. That's basically what his documentary said. Truthfully, it shouldn't even be called a documentary because it was so lacking in actual information and created and perpetuated a narrative that is just wrong and harmful. Which was disgusting to me. I felt that it was irresponsible because a lot of people watch that documentary and probably think, you know, that was a really good introduction to eating disorders, when it wasn't. And this is a problem on this platform. I recommend checking out of Herbs and Alters if you are interested in actually learning more about eating disorders, or, alternatively, subscribe to me. Not so much because of Shane, but in this instance, who did I mention at the beginning? Who? Who did I mention? Katie Morton. The expert on everything who's actually just a family therapist. I don't even know if she's a psychologist or a psychiatrist or if she's literally just a therapist. Not that there's anything wrong with being a therapist, but as I said at the beginning with my little random story about, you know, a nurse pretending to be the head of brain surgery, don't, don't, don't lie about what you do. Do what you do, be proud of what you do. Katie Morton, unfortunately, decided, nope, nope, I'm gonna go on this show with Shane and I'm gonna talk about eating disorders, like I know what I'm talking about, and I'm gonna talk about how binge eating is a disorder where you eat a lot of food and don't do anything, so you put on a lot of weight, and then there's bulimia, where you eat a lot of food and then you purge it, and then there are others that I'm not gonna get into. Ah, uh, stigmatizing anorexia? Are we stigmatizing anorexia? I think we're stigmatizing anorexia there. <laughs> Well done, Katie Morton, well done. Good job! So that was something, really. And Shane Dawson, having apparently having a history of eating disorders, I was amazed at how little he seemed to know, how he didn't seem to understand that telling someone with an eating disorder, you look really healthy, or you look well, basically what we hear is, you've gained weight. You're fat. You're disgusting. I know, it's horrible. And most of us can probably rationalise that that's not quite what you mean, like you genuinely mean this that you look good, but it doesn't matter because that voice inside our heads says, no, 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 they're saying you look fat. Shane didn't seem to understand any of that. So he relied, seemed to rely quite heavily on Katie, who isn't an expert in eating disorders. And she gave basic information, like don't talk about her appearance, don't probe her to talk about like what she eats in a day. I don't even know if she said that actually, but she said some stuff that was pretty much blah. Like you could literally have just read the first page of Google and you'd know pretty much as much as what she said. So she was kind of pointless in that documentary. And that happened. And the documentary did a couple of things. One, it painted it out like it was this very easy disorder to get over when actually it has the highest death rate out of any mental health disorder. Many, many people die from anorexia and they don't always die because they lose so much weight and their bodies stop working. They die of heart attacks. They commit suicide. They self-harm. There's so much that happens with eating disorders. So to paint a picture and pretend that they are sunshine and roses isn't the case at all and I think the reason that people are so confused now because we're seeing her losing more weight again don't realize that most people with an eating disorder will relapse two maybe three times before they get better if they get better so actually what we're seeing isn't that strange when you look at it as an eating disorder the thing that's heartbreaking about it is that we're looking at someone posting videos like everything's fine and we're seeing her waste away and there's nothing we can do about it but no 
I don't think it has anything to do with toxic positivity and I don't mean that to sound harsh. I know Pastel Bell thinks there is just cause for saying that toxic positivity has something to do with Eugenia's situation and I understand that Pastel Bell has a history of eating disorders herself so I'm not trying to dismiss what she has said at all. I'm just saying from my personal perspective and my struggles with an eating disorder, I don't think it's about toxic positivity. I genuinely don't think Eugenia cares. I don't think she's being nice and positive and happy in her videos because she feels that she has to by society's standards. I just think she's not of a sound mind and I don't think she's thinking clearly and I think she has resigned herself to a really dark truth that is that she's chosen to commit suicide in front of millions of people slowly. And we'll get into why I think that and all of the various different situations and perspectives surrounding Eugenia and what's happened with her over the past few years later on in the video. Shane Dawson's documentary, I feel, made the public think that that was a good understanding of eating disorders and they've reacted how they've reacted since based on what they learnt from that. So they've tried to... to a lot of people try to tell Eugenia how worried they are for her, please can she like get in recovery, they hope that she's well, then you get other people saying you look like you're dying, and all of these comments, either she wants to hear them, she wants to hear you look like death, I can see all of your bones, you look awful, that's what she wants to hear, and if you tell her she looks fat or ugly, she's still going to lose more weight. So none of those things are going to work, and unfortunately because of the way this situation has been been the way the discourse and the narrative has been set um i think it's caused a lot of issues when it comes to how accountable eugenia is and how much we can do because at the end of the day there's not much but whose fault is that it's katie morton's fault i'll explain why so before eugenia went and got some help her friends jacqueline glenn david and ava were concerned about Eugenia and they didn't know what to do. So Jacqueline reached out to Katie Morton. Why are we still thinking that she would know what she's talking about for some reason? I don't know why. And Katie basically said, okay, so trick Eugenia, tell her you're going somewhere that she'll want to go that's normal and then actually take her to your house. Then basically stage an intervention because everyone wants an intervention, right? Yeah. They're, they're everyone's favourite thing. Interventions. Yay. Inter Interfriendsions. And once you've got her in your house and you're staging your intervention, call the psychiatric mental health specialist and they will come to your home and they will speak to Eugenia. And if she fails their assessment, they will issue a 5150, which is basically similar to, in the UK, what sectioning is. It's basically when someone is deemed not able to make their own decisions. So they are taken in to get help and treatment for their condition. Immediately from that, one thing that should be very clear to you. She can't really be held responsible for what she's doing if she's not psychiatrically, mentally well, to the point that she failed a psychological evaluation. Look at Britney Spears, yeah? Her entire life is basically controlled by her dad or her sister, her family, because the courts deem her as not fit to look after herself. So she can't be held accountable in the same way. Yes, she can be held accountable to an extent, but not to the same level. Get it? Okay. Unfortunately, Jacqueline did that and I thought it was very, it, it was great that she did that. I mean, she said herself, she chose Eugenia's life over the friendship, which is very sad, but it's understandable. I myself had a situation a while ago, my partner was having, I don't know if it was a manic episode or a psychotic episode, but it was very scary. And I thought he's a lot bigger than me. Um, he was completely dissociated. He didn't even know his name. It was a very, very terrifying situation. He was running around, like leaving the house and I couldn't keep up with him because of my disability. And it was 
a nightmare and I was very scared and I reached out to some friends and they said to call the police and I said no <laughs> looking back I should have called paramedics but I was just freaking out and I didn't know what to do and I said to my friends don't call the police because I've been assaulted by the police and I don't trust them and I don't want them in my house I don't want them to read this situation incorrectly because I think it's very easy for people to do that. My friends showed that they read the situation incorrectly and they called the police anyway. And I was heartbroken because they completely betrayed me. However, <laughs> after a few weeks, I did speak to them and I said, you know, I was very upset. You betrayed me, but I can understand why you did it. So thank you for helping. Thank you for doing what you could. Unfortunately, that's not what happened with Eugenia. So the situation with Eugenia is that, just like I said, she felt absolutely betrayed by her closest friends. They told her that they were going to an escape room, which is something that they would do often. And instead, they basically took her to Jacqueline's apartment. They wouldn't let her leave. And they forced a psychological evaluation on her out of the blue. And she failed it. And she was taken into custody and forced into a hospital. Her parents were furious about it, which I, I think is low-key messed up because her family seemed to really, at best, they are completely blind or ignorant to the problem. And at worst, they're actually causing it and they're the problem. So for Eugenia, she felt completely betrayed. And the problem that we have now, part of the problem that we have now, is that Eugenia doesn't have any friends anymore. Or Jacqueline explained in a video how Eugenia's life, everything is planned. She's not allowed to leave the house without her parents' consent, and even then she has a driver. She doesn't have a driving license. It says she's 26 years old, she doesn't have a driving license. She's not allowed to freely come and go from her house, even when it's not 2020 and we're quarantined. And she's basically like a puppet on a string. I saw a clip of her live streaming and she phoned her mum to ask if she could go upstairs to get something. I mean, it's clear that there is a problem there, whether it's abusive or whether it's just controlling or whether it's because there's actually more to Eugenia's health that isn't public. Obviously, I can't say. But the problem is... <laughs> Katie Morton then went to see Eugenia and Eugenia told Katie about what Jacqueline Glenn and the friends had done and instead of saying yeah I told them to do that because we were worried for you she said oh I can't believe your friends did that to you that that must have been traumatizing wow they they completely betrayed you how why That's what she did. That's what this medical professional did. She lied through her teeth. She enabled Eugenia. She lied about her part in it. And you know what that did as a result? I can almost guarantee you this is what it did as a result. Eugenia no longer trusts anyone. Because as far as she's concerned, her closest friends decided on their own to do what they did to her. It traumatised her. I've spoken to many of my community of people with eating disorders or people who've had eating disorders and many of us agree that it would be absolutely traumatizing absolutely traumatizing and i'm sure that if you speak to someone who has been sectioned or 5150'd they would tell you it's traumatizing the fact that it's also your friends doing it to you on top of that that's going to be traumatizing it's going to leave you with trust issues and because she lives in such a a controlled environment she probably doesn't trust anyone anymore so how is she supposed to get help now because the only people that were there to help her the first time they're not allowed to get close anymore and if katie morton had been honest about what she'd done maybe eugenia actually that's not true i'm sure shane dawson or katie morton would be able to get close again but since they already made their money off of the situation and exploited a sick woman, they don't seem to care anymore. Which is actually really sad as well when you think about it because they absolutely exploited Eugenia. It was way too soon in her quote-unquote recovery to do that documentary, to do all of those videos. Anyone with an eating disorder will tell you that the main reason there are so few people that talk about eating disorders 
is, is because in recovery, generally, if you're going to talk about them and you relapse, which is common, it can make you feel guilty, it can make you feel worse, and it can be incredibly detrimental to your recovery. So most people would say that you shouldn't really start talking openly about it until you have a good, solid grasp on the situation. And they didn't take any of that into account with Eugenia, which is which is just another factor in the whole situation that shows how exploited she was, how lied to she was, how manipulated she was, and leads me to question, did Shane and Katie ever actually care about Eugenia, or did they just care about making a quick buck? Maybe Eugenia would have forgiven Jacqueline and company, and we might be in a different situation now. So... That's my thoughts on that. On top of that, while Shane's documentary made the disorder and Eugenia's situation look like sunshine and roses, after that, I wasn't the only person with a problem with it. I think a lot of people had a problem with it, Loki. Did you have a problem with it? Yeah? She says Katie Morton's a... I'm not gonna repeat it. She, 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 she did not approve of the documentary. Shame. Yeah, that, that, that's right. Okay, so, thanks, Julahan. What happened next? After Shane Dawson released his documentary and then there was a video released of Eugenia with Katie Morton, Jacqueline Glenn and her friends decided that they needed to upload a response video. And they basically said that they were very confused as to why Katie Morton acted like she had nothing to do with the 5150ing and basically why Katie Morton acted like she didn't say, save their life, betray them today. <coughs> I'm not saying it was 100% wrong of Jacqueline. I think Jacqueline did what an expert told her to. So I'm not really going to like say much about it. But Jacqueline and her friends were also confused because they had explained to Katie the situation in the house, how it seemed like a Venus situation. Venus was a girl who was very into kind of kawaii stuff, same as me. And um, it turned out that her mum was basically manipulating her and forcing her to make all of this content and do all of the stuff that she didn't really want to do so that they had lots of money and Primic did a really good video on that so I'll link it below but from what Jacqueline said it sounds like it's a very similar situation in that house that the mum is very very controlling and whether it's abuse manipulation or absolute control or as I said that there's more to Eugenia's health and mental health that we don't know about I couldn't say, but apparently there was a lot of information that they felt Shane had ignored in his documentary so that he could patent it and make it out to be this beautiful story when it wasn't. <sighs> Here's my problem. I understand why they felt the need to do that, but what they did, whether they knowingly meant to do it or not, is they villainized Eugenia Cooney. They villainized their friend. They villainized a woman who is very sick. She referred to them as bullies because she felt betrayed by them, which is completely understandable given the situation. And they made it look like she was a villain in the story. Okay, this is what confuses me. So Jacqueline says that she chose Eugenia's life over Eugenia's friendship because she felt that it was important that Eugenia live, which is great. And we love that. It's fantastic. But why then? after Shane did his documentary that I'm guessing, you know, Eugenia didn't really have that much say in, did they feel the need to open up on the platform? Not only did they, knowingly or not, villainize Eugenia Cooney, they made themselves look like, look like the victims, which is low-key kind of assholey of them, I'm going to be honest. Like, it was very clear in that video how much they care. Jacqueline was shaking she was clearly holding back a lot of emotion she was clearly struggling with it and I feel for that but it wasn't necessary to villainize someone who's sick and then to make yourself look like the victim or yourselves look like the victims and make Eugenia into some kind of villain Good job. when she wasn't the villain in the story Katie was Shane maybe was and then Creepshow Art did a video, and I love Creepshow Art, 
So I'm just reminding you. And then Creepshow did a video enforcing the idea that Eugenia is absolutely of sound mind and that she knows exactly what she's doing and that her calling Jacqueline Glenn and, the, and her friends a bunch of bullies because they tried to help her. Eugenia is absolutely in the wrong. That what Jacqueline Glenn did was amazing, wonderful, the best thing ever. They're the most wonderful human beings that have ever existed and will ever exist. And we should bow down to their awesomeness because they're fantastic. And I do understand that perspective. Unfortunately, that video only furthered the narrative that Eugenia Cooney is the villain in this story. And I do not agree with that narrative. No, Eugenia is not absolutely in the wrong. In my opinion, Eugenia is sick. She's in an environment that at best is ignoring the situation and at worst is fueling and forcing the situation. And unfortunately, people tend to listen to commentary channels. If you want to push the narrative that Eugenia is of sound mind, I would say to you, how can you know that? Look back at Eugenia's back catalogue and tell me that you think that that is the same person. Tell me that you don't think anything has changed in that girl's life. To take her from where she used to be, for her voice to change, for her character, her mannerisms to change? You want to say that she's of sound mind? At best, she's been starving herself for years. Like, there is no way she is of sound mind. And I'm sorry if you don't like me saying that, but it's true. She failed a 5150. That means she's not okay. And yet she got some treatment, but nothing's been done since. I don't agree that someone who fails a psychological evaluation and is in toxic home environment can be held 100% accountable. If you look at Eugenia Cooney's older videos, you'll see that she speaks with a completely different voice. She's still very thin, but her voice is much lower and she has a very different vibe. Whether that's because she's got so into playing a sort of character, because maybe outside of YouTube, she doesn't know who she is. As someone with borderline personality disorder, I suffer with identity. We, we don't really have a fixed identity like other people because of trauma that we faced in our childhood. That's the main cause of it. Anyway, that's a separate video, but people with BPD don't really have an identity in the way that you do. So I can understand the idea that maybe because Eugenia started YouTube so many years ago and when she was a teenager, maybe she doesn't know who she is outside of YouTube. You know, she talks a lot about Tim Burton and Jack Skeleton and how she loves that character and she's kind of become the skeleton queen. And if she doesn't know who she is without her eating disorder and without YouTube, then that would be even more terrifying to try and recover from it. So I feel like even if these creators meant well, they send a message to other people who don't know what eating disorders are like. For example, the narrative on this has very much been the perspective of a friend of someone with an eating disorder, or you know a loved one with an eating disorder, because that's the perspective that's the easiest to understand for most people. And yes, I do know that Creepshow did uh, have issues with an eating disorder when she was younger, but I did feel that she villainized Eugenia Cooney further by saying Eugenia's calling you know Jacqueline Galen and her friends bullies but they were amazing and what they did was fantastic and it was but we cannot forget the point that Katie Morton manipulated that situation and in so doing that destroyed any trust and hope for trust that Eugenia had it's not surprising that she responded in the way she did and I don't feel that villainizing her is the right thing to do. There have been some other videos and some people argue that Eugenia knows exactly what she's doing. Like with her recent Barbie video, cosplay video, you know, how it's a body check video, how she knows that she is pushing pro Anna content, triggering eating disorder content out to her predominantly young fan base. But my argument here is, does she? 
Let's say her entire life is being controlled and manipulated. What if she is literally being told, here's a Barbie outfit, do a cosplay, and then edit it and put a thumbnail on that makes you look thin? Like, what if that's actually what's happening? I know she's a grown adult, but if she's truly had such a severe eating disorder for such a long time, it would not be surprising if she'd caused long term damage to her brain. A lot of people say one of the reasons that people with eating disorders get so trapped in them is because as you start to starve your body, your body stops working, your mind gets clouded and that's why you often develop body dysmorphic disorder as well because your brain can't catch up with what you actually look like. So occasionally for example I might glimpse myself like I might see myself in a reflection for a second and be like whoa that's a thin person but then as soon as I realize it was me it like doubles in size <laughs> I love that for me <laughs> so if that's what's going on I would argue that Eugenia Cooney is not responsible I would also say <laughs> if she starved her body and her mind of nutrients for such a long period of time and she failed a 5150 then she can't really be held accountable to the same standard that other people would be if she's not psychologically well and I think that's something that's been forgotten here I think people have gone with the yes Jacqueline Glenn they did everything that they were told to they did what was right and Eugenia is wrong for losing her trust in them for calling them bullies and yada 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 and I don't blame anyone for that and I'm not trying to like throw shade or hate towards either of these people as in Creepshow and Jacqueline because in Jacqueline's videos you could see how much she cares like that's that's I don't think most people will ever find a friend that cares about them that much in their entire life. <gasps> she really cared. Like you can see that. She's shaking. You can you can see how much she cares about the situation and how painful it is for her to see her friend like that. And how painful it is that she was betrayed because she was told to do something by someone she trusted. And they basically like warped the entire situation. <laughs> The accountability should be on Katie Morton, who orchestrated a lot of it, and who was supposed to be the expert. <laughs> She's not an expert in eating disorders. So why she was even involved, I have no idea. From that, it's understandable to me that people who watch Creepshow or Jacqueline's videos and don't have a history or an understanding of eating disorders would agree with them and would think, well, yeah, they did do the right thing. And I'm not really here to say whether they did or didn't because I can understand the arguments for both sides. I feel personally that there's a bigger problem in that house that needs to be looked at and I don't know how that's gonna be helped. And the reason I say that is that Eating disorders are symptomatic usually of other problems like undiagnosed mental health issues or something like that. And if Eugenia was just basically sent somewhere and given food to eat, that doesn't... And that's how it's treated in the UK as well. They just feed you and as soon as you weigh an okay amount, they get rid of you and the cycle repeats. Or if you refuse to eat when you're receiving treatment for anorexia, they kick you out of the treatment plan. I'm not even joking. If you don't gain enough weight each week, they just kick you out. And that, that, that's it. That's it. That, that's what they do. I wish I was making this up. Because as soon as you get out, you're like, oh, I put on all this weight, now I need to lose it all again. So it's, it's not helpful. It's not helpful. And it's not helpful in this case to villainize a sick woman. The people that want to say she knows what she's doing. Listen to the story. Hear how she failed the 5150. Hear how toxic her home environment is. Look at how much she's changed over the years. And that could be because of prolonged damage, or it could be for other reasons, or it could be 
bad. And the problem is, as an adult, there's not much that there's a lot more that you can do if it's a child in a difficult situation than if there's an adult in a difficult situation. And I just feel that in this instance, villainizing her isn't the way. Sending hate comments, disliking her videos. I think some of you do that and you really don't care about how it feels. Saying anything that's just horrible is like, that's not really helpful. And it's cruel, it really is. I think people forget that the people behind the, sc the people behind the screen are human beings. And I think people are forgetting that Eugenia is a human being who, regardless of, I think people forget that she's a human being. I think a lot of people go and dislike her videos because they're not considering her feelings or the effect it could have on her mental health or anything whatsoever. I know there are people that are like, well, if you're gonna put yourself on, on YouTube, then like you open yourself up to negative comments. And it's like, yeah, you do, but not really hate. Like hate is strong. And then I think other people just like the videos because they think, oh, well, if we just like enough of her videos enough, then she'll, she'll realize that we're not enjoying this content and that she needs to put on weight. But, Disliking her video still provides her with engagement and that's going to push her videos more so more people are going to see it. And then if you want to go on tirades shouting about how she knows exactly what she's doing and she's a grown adult and it's her responsibility to get better and she's pro-Anna and she's going to hurt so many young people, I hear you. I hear you. But it's not necessarily as straightforward as that. Someone failing a psychological evaluation and then it's trying to hold that person to the same standard as a healthy person. D do you not get what you're doing? It doesn't make sense. As I said at the beginning, my feelings, my opinions, my perspective on this whole situation are complex. And to be perfectly honest with you, being in the middle of an eating disorder myself is obviously going to impact my perspective but that's why I wanted to do this video because I haven't seen many people with eating disorders or with history of eating disorders actually talk about it for understandable and obvious reasons and uh, I guess because I'm a masochist but also my mum had severe depression she was an alcoholic she was anorexic herself and she tried to kill herself a number of times before she succeeded when I was 15 years old. So I've been that person who saw someone deteriorate in front of my eyes before. Just before my mum died, she finally agreed to go into a psychiatric hospital for help. And I didn't really know much about the situation. I know that she had ECT while she was there, which I... Anyway, um, that's beside the point. I had heard, I had been told that she wasn't eating and that she hadn't eaten anything since she'd been there. So my 15 year old brain said, I know, I'll take her a box of copper soups because it's, it's soup, right? But you just add hot water and you drink it out of a mug. So maybe she can pretend that she's just drinking something. And I took her a bottle of Coke because again, my 15 year old brain knew that my mum used to drink Bacardi and Coke and I thought maybe she'd want the Coke. And the last thing my mum said to me before she died was, is there Bacardi in it? And I said, of course not. And she said, I don't want any of it then. So I've seen someone I love die of granted it wasn't just the eating disorder but i have seen someone that i loved waste away in front of me i've seen someone lose any empathy that they ever had my mom was my everything she was one of the most beautiful trusting empathetic compassionate people and at the end she wasn't that anymore. <laughs> but I don't remember her like that. I remember who she was. Not 
the disease that she had. And I think, I'm hoping that sharing this little, sharing this will help you understand a bit more where I am coming from and why I am trying to stop people villainizing someone who is sick. Back to me not crying now. (laughs) And looking at her as a villain doesn't make sense. Yes, let's hold people accountable. Let's hold Katie Morton accountable for what she's done. The damage that she has caused, the irreparable damage she has caused to Eugenia Cooney. What she did to Jacqueline Glenn for thinking that she has the right to talk about eating disorders when she's not an expert in them. Jacqueline Glenn tries to talk about what's going on. As a result, she villainizes Eugenia because Eugenia feels that Jacqueline is a bully thanks to what Katie Morton did. Jacqueline Glenn, through talking about that situation, makes it sound like she is the victim, which reinforces the idea that Eugenia is the bad guy and Eugenia gets attacked. And somehow Katie Morton gets like, just like a Jeffree Star and she just like swishes under the radar. It's not a black and white situation where someone's like messed up and they need to apologize and take accountability. This isn't that kind of situation. This isn't tea. This isn't cancel culture. I mean, to be honest, in my opinion, the best way to help her is to unsubscribe from her channel, to stop watching her videos, to stop commenting, stop liking. All interaction on her videos should be stopped. In my opinion, let's hold YouTube accountable. Because even if you want to say Eugenia is a grown adult, if you don't know, if you haven't watched this, this I watched a lot of videos, okay, and there, I'm, I am convinced that there is a problem in that house, absolutely convinced. And I don't think everyone's seen those videos. I'm gonna try and put some of the videos down below, but there was a lot, so I may not get all of them in, but I'll try and add some. But also remember, failed a psych eval, but she knows what she's doing. <laughs> no, if you fail a psych eval, you don't know what you're doing. So trying to hold her to that standard is not okay. And it's not gonna be okay. And as I've said, and I feel like I need to hammer this home, I'm not trying to shade or blame Shannon or Jacqueline because I understand where they're coming from. And I understand that everyone else who has watched those videos and why they agree and have the perspective that they have. But as someone with an eating disorder, I want you to know, as someone who sat through hours and hours of content, and when I say hours and hours, I mean it. I mean, like, I probably spent a total of 24 to 36 hours watching content on this, watching Eugenia's content, old and new, watching commentary videos, watching documentaries, listening to different specialists talk about it. Like, I'm not, I'm not, this wasn't something that I just did because I watched one video and I felt enraged about it. This is something I've really, really made sure I've I done my research on because I wanted to be able to explain the different perspectives to you. I wanted to be able to shed light on some of the aspects of the story that you might not know. And I think they have a big effect here. So yeah, I think that's kind of where we're at. Um, again, it's it's a long video, but I wanted to try and include some sides of the story that you might not know. I don't think villainizing Eugenia is the way forward here. As I said, I think not watching her, I'm not saying to deplatform her, but I think YouTube has culpability here. I think YouTube, I think they should demonetize her channel and potentially suppress her content to stop the reach that it's getting because it's dangerous and damaging and she might not know what she's doing. She might to some extent, but equally I can take a photo and think I look horrendous and fat and then look at it again a couple of months later and be like, oh, I look so good. And it's like, So she might be making these thumbnails and looking at these pictures and she might not be seeing what she's seeing. Body dysmorphic disorder is a real disorder. They think it's something to do with eye movements can tell. Like there's been a study done, I think it's in Australia, and they look at the way people's eyes work and apparently they can tell if you've got body dysmorphic disorder from that. The more you starve yourself, the more your brain stops working the way it's supposed to. And 
it can affect your body. For example, um, in my legs, I have like discoloration and it's because of my body having problems circulating my blood to my feet. And um, it doesn't matter what you say to me, what anyone says to me, I can't, because the voice in my head is the voice that is the loudest. And if you want to try and have a go at me and blame me for something, say that I'm responsible for X, Y, or Z, that's just going to make me feel worse. And the thing with Eugenia is I do understand that maybe she should be off social media. I mean, she definitely, regardless of whether she's aware of it or not, her content is triggering and it's not really okay which is why I say that I feel in this instance YouTube should intervene YouTube should demonetize her channel and suppress it they've suppressed other people's in the past I don't see why they can't do that now and I have friends that say it's nothing to do with YouTube like it's not YouTube's responsibility for Eugenia to get well and to stop doing what she's doing but the problem is is that I've been there I've been sucked into pro Anna forums where I've spoken to people and they've egged me on I've been there when people are congratulating me on how much weight I've lost even when I wasn't planning to lose weight and how good that made me feel so I lost more weight and it's all great and it's lovely and it's joyous and then you get to a point where suddenly you start not seeing yourself again. Imagine you wanted to lose loads of weight. So you say, I'm gonna diet, and I'm gonna lose, I don't know, 10 pounds. Imagine losing a bunch of weight, and then looking in the mirror, and knowing you've lost it, but not being able to see that you've lost it, and instead you look bigger. Imagine how painful that would be to you. You'd be so confused, because your clothes would be too big, but when you look in the mirror, you're huge. So how do you, deal with that and I think here the the biggest problem is that Eugenia needs psychological help not she doesn't need to be fed food or force fed she needs actual help she needs taking out the situation that she's in she's clearly got a lot of money she could clearly afford to live on her own and yet she's still living with her parents and I genuinely feel that Katie Morton is the reason that Eugenia does not trust anyone outside of her family anymore. There's also someone that did a video speculating that she might have a problem that means she can't live on her own, which is why she's still with her family and is something that's not known to the public. So please don't think I'm trying to say that we should let her do what she wants. I genuinely don't have an answer for you here. I genuinely don't know what to say, what to do about it, because I think Katie Morton destroyed any hope that there was for anyone to get close to Eugenia again and it it worries me it concerns me it's not nice having an eating disorder and looking at that kind of content and having one part of your brain be like oh my god she looks she looks like a skeleton it's horrible and then having the other side of your head that says I want to look like that and if a grown adult like me can feel that <laughs> shaking um I do think the content is damaging but I don't think all the blame should be on someone who is not psychologically stable and is not mentally well I think if anyone is the problem here it's us it is the people villainizing her or bullying her in the comments or yelling for her to be held accountable we're the problem and YouTube is the problem like I'm sorry but YouTube what are you doing by monetizing her content it implies that you agree with what you're what she's doing you're endorsing what she's doing which as i've said whether she knows it whether she's aware or not whether she's being controlled or not whatever the situation is it's pro anna content and it needs to be demonetized but eugenia doesn't need to be demonized <laughs> I have so much more that I could say but I'm gonna stop because I've been talking for ages. I know this video is a lot. I've tried to kind of explain my personal perspectives on things as someone with an eating disorder and 
I hope that you understand I'm not saying doing is fine, but equally I don't think what Jacqueline did was fine. I don't think what Creepshow did by demonising Eugenia and all these commentary channels that continue to villainise Eugenia. I don't think that's the right way to go. I think Pastel Bell did a great video trying to do a similar thing to me and look at it through her lens of when she had an eating disorder, but obviously she's recovered, whereas I'm not. But I think a softer approach is needed if we think we can do anything. And I think audience accountability is a thing. I mean, some people would argue that Eugenia is not responsible for what someone on the other side of the world does because they watch her content. But equally, if you know what your audience is and you know how big your audience is, then maybe you are responsible. But if you're not mentally cognizant, are you responsible? I'm sorry. I stand by it that she is ill. And I stand by the fact that she doesn't trust human beings anymore. I don't think she's at a point where she's purposely trying to hurt anyone. To be honest, I think she's accepted that she's gonna die. I think she doesn't care. I think she is desensitized. I think she honestly does not care. She's decided that if she dies or when she dies, she will go out as the Jack Skeleton Queen of YouTube and be remembered because of her eating disorder, because of her mental state. She thinks that's fine. And I understand that people are trying to protect teenagers and people struggling with eating disorders or people who are at, at a stage of life where they are particularly susceptible to eating disorders. But yelling and screaming on social media about how Eugenia Cooney is a terrible human being isn't going to change anything. I'm not saying that means they can do what they want without repercussions. It doesn't work like that. But understanding the difference between how accountable someone can be held based on their health, I think is an important thing to consider. And I also think that people who have done things wrong should be held accountable. And I think Katie Morton in this instance is, if you wanna call someone the villain for this story, if that's what makes you feel more comfortable, then I would say that Katie Morton is the villain of this story. And there you go. So maybe we can take a different perspective on it. Maybe we can think about what it's like to be in her shoes. Because I feel that a lot of people watched Jacqueline's video after Shane's and automatically that cemented the idea that this story story was going to be told from the perspective of Jacqueline, the friend who did everything she could to save her friend, knowing that that would cost her that friendship. And that's a lovely story, but it's not the only perspective. But yeah, in the meantime, I think YouTube suppressing the content, maybe YouTube putting an age restriction on her content would also help so less children can see it. I know some children lie about their age, but I think that would be helpful. And I know that YouTube like to stay away from these kind of situations, but they demonetize people for much less and they have the right to demonetize someone whenever they want. So the fact that they haven't demonetized what is very clearly, whether intentional or not, pro anal content and very, very triggering content blows my mind. <laughs> frankly, blows my mind. I wanted to try and open up the narrative and I hope it will make sense. <laughs> I know it's a long video, but that's what I do. I rant for an hour. Welcome to my channel. <clears throat> that's kind of how I feel about it. I would be really interested to hear what you think down below. You know, do you agree? Do you disagree? Is there anything you think we can do? I honestly, at this point, I don't know if there's anything we can do. If you wanna hear more about my perspective on this, I have so many more notes, <laughs> but I think that's enough for now. I have a video coming up talking about sort of anorexia and, and what it is and how to speak to people with anorexia and that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in hearing that, um. then that will be out soon. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. It seems a bit weird to say like it because of the content, but you know, and subscribe. <laughs> Uh, more content like this. In the new year, I want to try and start uploading every Thursday and Monday, but 
I don't know how realistic that is 100%, so make sure you have the bell on so that you know when I do drop a video. And yeah, big thank you from Doolahan. I'm a unicorn! And myself. I hope it was kind of enjoyable and informative and did shed a bit of light. I hope you have a wonderful holiday period. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to close this video, it just feels horrible. But a big thank you from me and Glimmer, big kiss. And I'll look forward to talking with you down in the comments and keep unicorning. Bye!